Hi, my name is Peter Acker. Today we're going to be discussing anaphylaxis. We'll be using a case from the television show ER to help highlight some of the important learning points. And let's start with the case. Focus, Henry. What do you hear? <sighs> oh. Oh. Uh, I'm, 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 what do you hear? I'm not sure. I Spans know. a pneumothorax. Come over here. I'll show you how to put it in a chest tube. I'll grab a tray. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I bet it hurts. Just hang on there, buddy. Everything will feel better in just a minute. Okay, Henry, first thing that you want to do is feel for the ribs. Along the mid-axillary line, locating the fifth inner space. Can I get some betadine? Where you make the incision. I, uh, I'm not feeling so good. What? I'm not feeling so good. Well, sit down. Put your head between your knees. Well, give it to Kelly. How you doing, Henry? Oh. Lydia, do me a favor. Slide Henry out of the way. Carter, he's a little cyanotic. What? Can't get a pulse on the banger. Lydia, call an attending. All right. So you'll notice, in this case, our patient is a 20-something-year-old male who initially appears reasonably well. He's uh, in the emergency department observing a procedure, but then he begins to complain to his supervising resident that he feels unwell. As time goes on, you notice he collapses to the floor and appears unconscious. And when he's assessed by one of the emergency room nurses, they mention that he looks a little bit cyanotic. So, speaking in generalities, when we assess any unconscious patient, I'd like you to discuss what are the first things that you have to do when you're uh, coming to evaluate them. And then, in regards to this particular patient, let's imagine that this is your patient, you're working in this emergency department, and you're going to be evaluating this patient. So, as you're walking into the room, I'd like you to describe what your first one minute of time is going to look like with this patient, what you'll be evaluating and how you'll be evaluating it. In emergency medicine, we often think, act, and evaluate all at the same time, so we have to practice that. And with this particular patient, if we observe closely during the presentation, we'll notice there's a few clues. So I'd like you to discuss what did you notice about this patient's presentation that may give us a couple of hints as to what's going on. And then lastly, after noticing those uh, small hints in his presentation, what are the top three items on your differential? All right, so we'll continue on with the case. What happened? Banger at attention pneumo, Henry passed out. All right, I'll finish the chest tube. Get your student in the trauma tube. Okay. Henry, you're gonna be just fine. All right, everybody grab hold. I'm gonna count one, two, three. What happened? I don't know. I was showing him how to put it in a chest tube, and he just fainted. Go uh, on the other side. A wheeze is bilaterally. Pulse ox is 86. So in that video, you notice that the patient is placed on a backboard and is being moved to a resuscitation area for further evaluation. Um, on the way there, you notice one of the colleagues is performing a brief exam and mentions some of her findings. And it looks like in route an IV was placed and the patient was placed on a monitor. So thus far, uh, the exam has been fairly brief, but I'd like you to discuss any abnormalities that have been noted on the general appearance and level of consciousness exam, as well as the assessment of the ABCs. And then, as we frequently do in the emergency department, what interventions would these abnormalities prompt, i.e., what would your inter initial interventions be? All right, moving on to the next part of the case. I need to intubate. Chuni, give me a laryngoscope. Come on, let's go! Did he complain of feeling sick? He's always complaining. He's a hypochondriac. Is he on any meds? Not that I know of. Okay, let's get a CBC, Chem 20, and a tox screen. All right, I'm in. Bag him. Pulse ox is worse. Down 82. What? 
Carl, get a blood gas. Pressure's crashing. What the hell is going on? All right, so in that portion of the case, you saw that the patient was intubated by the male physician and was bagged by one of the associates. And you heard the female doctor asking for a few pieces of history. So she was asking a couple of questions and asked for a couple of labs. Um, one of their colleagues then mentioned that the blood pressure was declining and the oxygen saturation was also uh, lower than it had been previously. So they are obviously starting to act with incomplete information and gathering a little bit more background as they go. So at this point, how would you describe the patient's condition? How would you summarize what's going on here? Then moving on, what is your differential diagnosis for this patient who's now unconscious with hypoxia and hypotension. You heard uh, the female physician ask for a couple pieces of history. Unfortunately, none were available at this time in this case. However, if there were an information source, say a family member or a paramedic, someone who could provide some background, what pieces of history would you be interested in learning for, for this particular patient and presentation? And then lastly, the doctor was asking for a couple of labs. So they were starting to gather some information with uh, laboratory testing. Do you think that these would be helpful in this particular case? And if so, or if not, what workup would you be interested in for this patient and their presentation? His wrist is red, his left hand is red and endemitous. Right hand's also swollen. Oh, oh my God, he's allergic to latex. So in that last clip, the doctors note that the patient's hands are very red and edematous, and the male physician raises concern that this might be an allergic reaction. So at this point, do we need further workup to find our diagnosis? Or do we think that this is all related to an allergic reaction? If this is all related to an allergic reaction, what are the diagnostic criteria for anaphylaxis? And does this patient meet the diagnostic criteria, thus meeting the definition of anaphylaxis? Now that we may have a working diagnosis, we can start to focus our therapy a little bit. So I'd like you to discuss specific medications that we would use to treat this condition, particularly the critical medications, what dose and route are most essential for this patient, and then also adjunctive medications that we may consider using for this patient, uh, and as well as their dose and route. Okay. He's in a systole. Amphibabby, I be pushed. ET2 cuff has the latex. We've got to extubate. Lily, get me an ET2 from the latex free cart. Wash your hands first. Trudy, do me a favor. Give me a basin of water. Found a non-latex ET2. Give me a mega vacuum and 50 of Benadryl. So as you notice in that last video, the patient uh, was in asystole on the monitor. Uh, they then received an amp of epinephrine, and CPR was started by the male physician. And at that time, they were also asking for a milligram of atropine and 50 of Benadryl. So I'd like you to discuss the appropriate therapy for a patient in asystole, as well as um, thinking about what other causes may have been related to his progression, whether this was all related to anaphylaxis or if there are other things we need to be worrying about in an ill patient who goes into asystole. Laryngeal edema, I'm having a hard time getting in. How long has he been down? 30 seconds, damn it. Watch his teeth. I know. You see the cords? Barely. All right, Malik, high dose epi, seven cc's. You're doing great. Just keep sliding it in, very gently. I'm in. Great, Back good up. job, good job. Got a pulse. Woo, everything okay here? So in the last clip there, the patient was re-intubated. Uh, and on intubation, the physician noted a lot of laryngeal edema, making it difficult to intubate the patient. They received seven cc's of high dose epi, and at that point regained pulses. So uh, for this patient, I'd like you to discuss what was their response to the interventions provided by the medical team. 
Also, I'd like you to consider the epinephrine dose given. So they got seven cc's of high dose epi. For this purpose, we'll assume that the epi was uh, one to 1,000. So that would be seven milligrams of epinephrine. So I'd like you to discuss if that's an appropriate dose for this particular scenario. Um, outside of the setting of cardiac arrest, I'd like you to discuss what is the appropriate dose and route for epinephrine for patients um, in continuing shock. And then there's a few items regarding airway management. So this patient was reintubated in the setting of cardiac arrest. I'd like you to discuss why you think this patient was reintubated, what the reasoning was. And then in this particular case, um, there may have been concern for a misplaced ET tube. And so I'd like you to discuss um, how to confirm placement of an ET tube placement during endotracheal intubation. And then lastly, uh, I'd like you to discuss any special considerations for airway management in a patient with potential upper airway edema, like an anaphylaxis patient. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, this is the end of our first case. The next time you see us, we'll be discussing this case with one of our experts, and we'll get their insights on the questions that we asked during this last session.